Hi, it's Paul Anderson and welcome to Disciplinary Core Idea PS3A, which is on definitions of energy. We can look at a lightning strike and we know that there's energy there somewhere. But a question that we've always wondered is what is energy? And as we've discovered more and more about energy in different fields, we start to realize that we don't have much knowledge about what energy actually is. And even Richard Feynman, one of the greatest physicists of the modern age, had this to say. It's important that we realize in physics today, we have no knowledge of what energy is. And so there are some commonalities about energy, but a lot of it we don't really understand. And what is one of the greatest commonalities? It's this conservation of energy. We know that the amount of energy that goes into a system is equal to the amount of energy that comes out of a system. In other words, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And that's the one thing that puts all of energy together into this one group. And so as scientists over time have discovered energy in many different forms, we've named it in many different areas. And as a result, it's sometimes this alphabet soup of energy and it's somewhat confusing. And so I want to make this uh, as simple as I can. And physicists have done that in the standards. And so when we look at energy, there's really only three areas where energy is. And so we have energy that's a function of motion. And so as we have a mass that's moving at a given velocity, or to make this simple, at a given speed, it's going to have um, energy. It was energy of motion. And so not only like a car moving has that, but the particles as they vibrate inside this uh, steel that's really, really hot is going to be this function of motion. We also have energy that's due to the position within a field. And remember, a field is going to emanate. It could be gravitational field, a magnetic field, an electric field. But basically, objects are going to have fields around them. So the Earth is going to have gravitational fields around that. And based on where an object object is inside those fields, it's going to have varying amounts of energy. And so um, if we were to take a bowling ball and lift it a meter off the ground, it's going to have more energy due to its position within that field. And then finally, we kind of have a mishmash of these two where we have radiation. Radiation, we know, comes to us from the sun. So it's traveling through space. And really, it's vibrations within a field that creates that energy. And so if you can always think about energy in these three levels, it's going to make it a little bit easier to understand either a function of motion, position within a field, or finally radiation. And so where should you talk about energy in school? Well, they've left the lower elementary grades intentionally blank, and so you don't have to talk about it at all. And as they move into third, fourth, and fifth, it's pretty simple what they want you to talk about. And the first thing is that objects, as they're moving, have energy and the faster they move, the more energy they have. And so if we had these three objects here that are colored differently, but if they had the same mass and they were to move, which one of those would have more energy? It's going to be the one that's moving the fastest at any given moment. And you know this. If you were to get hit by a snowball, you'd, be, you'd rather get hit by one that's going really, really slow than one that's going fast. And that's because it's going to have less energy. Also, as you are in elementary school, you should talk about energy being able to be transferred from place to place. In other words, energy can move or it can be transferred from place to place and it can do that through a couple of ways. Sound would be one way that we can transfer energy from one place to another. And so right now the sound is going from your computer to your ears either through a headphone or through the air. And so the energy is being transferred from my voice. Also, light is transferring um, energy from your computer to your eyes. And then finally, this is all getting to your computer through an electrical current. And so there's energy that's moving that to your computer as well. And so you want students to understand that we can transfer energy. You really want to get away from the idea of saying sound energy or light energy. It's not really that sound is energy. It has the ability to transfer energy from one place to another. As we move into middle school, then we want to get to this idea, this core idea that energy can be found in as a function of motion and then as position within a field. And so that function of motion we tend to refer to as kinetic energy. And so kinetic energy is going to be energy of objects that have mass and then they also have a speed or they have a velocity. And we even have an equation for that. It's one half mv squared where m is the mass of the object. We'd measure that in kilograms. And then velocity is going to be in meters per second. So what does that mean? The more massive an object is, the more kinetic energy it can have as it's moving. And then the faster it's going, the more energy it has. And since this is a squared value, the velocity is incredibly important as far as kinetic energy. And then position within a field, we call that tend to call that potential energy. And so that's your position within a field. And so that could be, for example, 
you know, a apple at the top of a tree. There's going to be a gravitational field created by the large mass of the Earth. And as we move that apple up or down, we're going to vary the amount of potential energy it has. But it's not only gravitational. It could be magnetic potential energy or it could be electromagnetic. It could be, um, for example, electrons within a solenoid like we have right here. Then finally, um, you really want to talk about heat and heat transfer. Um, and so heat, and I put it in quotes right here, has a couple of different definitions. And so the first one you might think of as thermal energy due to motion of atoms. And so when you touch a table or you touch an object and you say that's hot or that's cold, that's one definition. And then the other definition is energy transfer as a result of conduction, convection, or radiation. Now one of these definitions is correct use in science and one of them is one that you should never use. And so in science, heat is simply the transfer of energy energy by conduction, convection, and radiation. We'll talk more about that in the next video. And so if we were to put these objects right next to each other, there's going to be a transfer of energy from the hot to the cold, and that's what heat is. When you're referring to this is a hot object or a cold object, what you're really talking about there is temperature. And temperature is going to be the average kinetic energy of particles of matter. And so it's important that the students understand the difference between temperature, which is motion of the molecules, kinetic energy of the molecules, and then heat, which is going to be a transfer of energy. As we move into high school, we really want to talk about um, energy. And so the core thing we want to talk about is the conservation of energy. The amount of energy that moves into a system is going to equal the amount of energy that moves out of a system. And so when you drive your car, where does the energy go? Well, some people think when you drive a car, you're somehow converting the gasoline into energy. No, you're not doing that. You're, you're taking the energy that was in the gasoline and you're converting it into another form. In this case, a lot of it is going into the motion of your car, but a lot of it also comes in the form of heat and sound generated by that car. And so the one commonality of all energy is this idea that energy is conserved. It can be neither created nor destroyed. And as you move into high school, macroscopically, in other words, when we're looking at it from the big picture, you're going to hear tons of different terms related to energy. So mechanical energy, for example, talks about all of the energy found within a machine. Or chemical energy is going to be the energy that can be released within the bonds as we have a chemical reaction. Or electrical energy could be the energy found in a battery. But all of these at the microscopic level are one of three things. Again, energy is simply a function of motion a function of position within a field, or radiation. And if you can keep it that simple when you're talking about energy and understanding this whole importance of conservation of energy, then you've got a good start. And I hope that was helpful.